Good evening and welcome to TVB News. Today is the summer solstice. The observatory recorded a maximum temperature of 34 degrees Celsius, marking the highest recorded temperature so far this year. Today is also the hottest summer solstice recorded in 140 years. The weather is expected to worsen in the next one to two days owing to effects of a trough of low pressure. Timothy Lee has our top story. Residents in Changshui experience sizzling heat in the hottest part of Hong Kong, with the area recording temperatures of up to 36.4 degrees Celsius in the afternoon. The temperature reached close to 40 degrees at a nearby sports ground. Many of those working outdoors were sweating profusely from the summer heat. This woman said she had to drink much more water than usual because of the high temperatures. Residents had employed several tactics combating the scorching heat, such as the use of portable electric fans and drinking herbal tea, while some chose ice cream as their choice of cooling down. This student said she felt dizzy from the heat, but the icy treat managed to lift her spirits. Some tourists noted the summer solstice offers a new travel experience. This visitor from Shenzhen said despite the heat, she really enjoys the air conditioning in the shopping malls. Hong Kong recorded an average temperature of 34 degrees this afternoon. Areas including Taipo, Yunlong, Sha Tin, and Taku Ling recorded maximum temperatures exceeding 34 degrees. The hottest urban area of Wang Tai Sin also saw temperatures exceed 34 degrees, while Stanley in the Southern District recorded a maximum temperature of 33.9 degrees. The observatory said the high temperatures were caused by the effects of a subtropical ridge of high pressure, with the sunshine extending across much of the Guangdong coastline. The weather body also recorded a maximum temperature of 34 degrees, making it the hottest day so far this year. The figure also reached the hottest summer solstice record set in 1980. Some Chinese medical practitioners reminded residents to drink warm green tea and avoid cold drinks to tackle the heat, and urged those working outdoors to constantly keep themselves hydrated. Timothy Lee, TVB News. The composite consumer price index figures for May rose 1.2 percent year-on-year. That marks a slight uptake of 0.1 percentage point from the growth rate in April. Netting out the effects of all government one-off relief measures, the year-on-year -year increase in the composite CPI, which is the underlying inflation rate in May, was 1 percent. It was also slightly higher than that in April. The biggest surge was recorded in the category of alcoholic drinks and tobacco, up about 20 percent. The price indices of meals out and takeaway food rose 3 percent. Meanwhile, the decreases expanded to 10.9 percent in the price index of electricity, gas and water. Looking ahead, the government expects overall inflation to stay contained in the near term, and external price pressures should continue to stay on a broad, moderating trend. It's said as the Hong Kong economy continues to grow, domestic cost pressures may mount. The latest monthly personal bankruptcy petition figure has hit its highest in more than two years. Compared with a month before, the bankruptcy case counts in May surged 17 percent. The government said the figures did not reflect the actual state of Hong Kong's economy. Hong Kong's economy might not be recovering as fast as hoped, with the number of personal bankruptcy petitions in May reaching its highest monthly level since April 2022. The official receiver's office said 871 personal bankruptcy petitions were filed in May, up 17 percent month on month. It also marks the third highest in the past four years. There were 61 petitions for compulsory winding up of companies last month, down 7 percent month on month, but it soared nearly 85 percent year on year. 624 receiving or bankruptcy orders were issued, recording a decline both month on month and year on year. Terence Chong, executive director of Lao Chor Tech Institute of Global Economics and Finance at the Chinese University of Hong Kong, said, while the jobless rate is low, the increase in bankruptcy petitions is likely caused by the depreciation in asset values and the tightening of bank lending. They include merchants or investors who bought houses or shops which depreciated much in value. The bankruptcy order will normally be discharged or end after four years. 
Locke, who was discharged from his bankruptcy order, said those declared bankrupt have to declare their travel and income every year to the official receiver's office. But as their debts were cleared, bankruptcy has helped them get back on the right track in life. The Financial and Treasury Bureau said there are fluctuations in the monthly figures of personal bankruptcy and company liquidation, and they cannot accurately reflect the city's actual economic situation. It added the government will continue to boost consumption to bring greater momentum of recovery to the retail industry. The Security Bureau recorded close to 37,000 crimes in the first five months of this year. It's an increase of 0.3 percent year-on-year, with the largest rise recorded related to extortions. Secretary for Security Chris Tang said scams remain the most common crimes recorded in the first five months, period, representing more than, more than 15,000 cases, while extortion crimes rose to some 1,120 cases, which is a rise of 28 percent year-on-year. Eighty percent of them involved nude chats. Meanwhile, the city recorded more than 600 burglaries over the same period, with a majority of victims living in villages. Authorities stress these people are being targeted owing to the lack of CCTV quality in village residences. The police have busted 12 fraud syndicates which engage in online employment and shopping scams involving a total of $70 million. 114 people were arrested. The 82 men and 32 women arrested consisted of unemployed individuals, drivers, waiters and housewives, and were involved in 73 fraud cases. 160 victims were involved, including students, engineers and other professionals. The largest case involved a mainland student in Hong Kong who lost $5.1 million. The scammers pretended to be mainland security officers who accused the student of being involved in a money laundering case and demanded money to prove his innocence. A total of 18 victims were scammed with the same method. Meanwhile, authorities said the syndicates frequently use employment effort advertisements as a means to scam their victims. Beijing announced that extreme cases of Taiwan independent separatist acts can be subject to the maximum penalty of a death sentence. The new guidelines stated that China's courts, prosecutors, public and state security bodies should severely punish Taiwan independence diehards for splitting the country and the crime of inciting secession. Beijing also stressed that Taiwan is an inseparable part of China, and Taiwan independence severely threatens regional peace and stability of the Taiwan Strait. It added no matter where the suspects are, Chinese courts can start a trial over such cases. Media reports that the Canadian government is considering new tariffs on Chinese-made electric vehicles to keep in line with the moves of the U.S. and the European Union. Chinese imports in the Canadian EV market have surged to 2.2 billion U.S. dollars in 2023 after Tesla shifted from U.S. factories for its Canadian sales to the manufacturing plant in Shanghai. Currently, Canada imposes a 6 percent tariff on such vehicles. Ottawa is reviewing the practices of other countries, such as Washington's 100 percent tariffs and the EU's extra duties of up to 38.1 percent on Chinese EVs. It has yet to make a final decision on how to move forward with a tariff hike, and a public consultation on the action could be underway. Beijing earlier rebuked the West's protectionist actions, saying China will take all necessary measures to firmly defend the legitimate rights of its companies. The Netherlands' outgoing Prime Minister Mark Rutte is the only candidate bidding to become the next NATO Secretary General after Romania's president withdrew from the race. Romania now supports Rutte's bid. Rutte is likely to be confirmed when NATO countries meet in Washington from July 9th to 11th to mark the bloc's 75th birthday. Rutte, speaking to journalists before taking a bicycle ride in the, at The Hague, said it was a complicated process to get to this stage, but it would be an honor to take the job. The 57-year-old Rutte would take over on October 1st from Norway's Jens Stoltenberg, who has been in the post since 2014. The Secretary General chairs meetings and speaks on behalf of the 32 NATO member countries. Rutte became Prime Minister of the Netherlands for the first time in October 2010. 
As the U.S. election season is heating up, Joe Biden and Donald Trump are gearing up for their first televised debate next Thursday. In a recent campaign battle, Democrats bashed how Republicans used the deceptively edited or cheap fake videos to attack Biden. This report from NBC. The video went viral faster than usual. President Biden at the G7 summit in Italy, surrounded by world leaders, appearing to wander off before being pulled back to the group by the Italian prime minister. In reality, another camera angle showed the president was actually trying to greet skydivers who just finished a demonstration. But the Republican National Committee and conservative media quickly amplified the first angle, falsely claiming the president was meandering. The Biden campaign is calling it a, quote, cheap fake. What is a cheap fake? Cheap fakes are, are these you know, deceptively edited videos, uh, and they're a huge part of, of Donald Trump's campaign strategy. Rob Flaherty is Biden's deputy campaign manager who's overseeing the escalating digital war and slamming the Trump campaign, saying it's increasingly taking videos out of context. We have to be more aggressive about monitoring, about intervening, about um, uh, taking action against it because it is just going to be such a centerpiece of, of how he's communicating. That G7 video is among a string of clips that some Republicans say raises concerns about President Biden's age and abilities. Tonight, the Trump campaign is arguing there's nothing wrong with highlighting videos that are not digitally altered, like this clip of President Biden standing still for several seconds on stage at a Hollywood fundraiser until former President Obama leads him off stage. And another where he also stood still as people danced around him during a Juneteenth celebration. The White House says the president did not freeze in these incidents, but was enjoying the moments. Tonight, the Trump team telling us the Biden campaign is trying to convince the American public not to believe their own eyes. We are simply posting these videos for the world to see and to come to their own conclusion on which the American public has. The Trump campaign argues the Biden team has taken the former president's words out of context. We're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. By claiming that comment referred to political violence instead of economic pain. Then he said if he loses, it's going to be a bloodbath. It's called the bloodbath hoax, taking my words completely out of context. There's always been misinformation during campaigns, but this election cycle, cyber experts expect much more of it, including AI-generated deepfakes. Russian President Vladimir Putin has wrapped up his two-nation Asia tour to North Korea and Vietnam. He struck multiple deals with Vietnam as Moscow seeks to bolster ties in Asia amid growing international isolation over its war in Ukraine. Tracy Furness reports. While visiting Vietnam, Putin met with Vietnamese President Tho Lam in Hanoi as he spoke with students. Viewed artwork and listened to a symphonic orchestra. Putin also met with the general secretary of the country's Communist Party, Win Phu Trong. Putin and Lam signed at least a dozen deals, with Russia also offering to supply fossil fuels, including natural gas, to Vietnam. Both countries agreed to further cooperate in education and science and technology. None of the 12 public agreements overtly pertain to defence, but Lam said there were other deals that were not made public. Putin spoke to reporters before leaving Hanoi. Pertaining to Ukraine, Putin said he doesn't expect North Korea's volunteers participating in what he calls the special military operation there. And when asked about nuclear weapons, he said that Russia doesn't need a preventative strike yet, because in a retaliatory strike, the enemy will be guaranteed to be destroyed. On Wednesday, Moscow and Pyongyang signed a pact to become each other's defense in the event of war. South Korean National Security Director Chang Ho-jin condemned the agreement for strengthening the two countries' economic and military cooperation. Chang said Seoul expresses grave concerns. This is South Korea's foreign ministry summoned Russian ambassador to Seoul, Georgi Zinoviev, to protest against Russia's new treaty with North Korea. In the United States, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said anybody that does a defense agreement with North Korea should be labeled a state sponsor of terrorism. After the defense agreement between North Korea and Russia, it is time for us to push back. Now is the moment, above all other moments. So I would urge the administration 
given what Putin has done yesterday, let's go all in and designating his regime for what it is, a state sponsor of terrorism. Tracy Furness, TVB News. And that's the news. Thank you for watching.